Hi, my name is Mira Beck and welcome to another episode of Overnight Success TV. In today's episode, I have a very special guest at our studio, uh, my good friend Mara Glazer, the businesswoman extraordinaire, and I'm super excited about picking her brain on uh, her success stories and her keys to success. So Mera, welcome to the studio. Welcome, thank you. Thank for you. being here. What's with this handshake? Uh, the <laughs> we're like, thing, we're, like, we're a hugging I situation. Know, I know, <laughs> right? So forever. I need to figure out a whole yeah, <laughs> fist bumps or whatever, <laughs> something or the other. So uh, yeah, that's funny. We should do the <laughs> virtual hug. Um, so cool, awesome. So Mera, let's just dive right in. Uh, okay. First of all, I want to kind of get into your story starting in the beginning. So kind of the growing up, where you came from, so people that are watching this, if they have a similar upbringing, uh, they can relate to your story. So let's just kind of establish the foundation per se. Cool, so I grew up working in my father's men's clothing store. Mm. So my grandfather had started a men's clothing store mm. after he got back from World War II. Mm. He told this story that he only had enough money in his pocket to buy a bagel and a herring. <laughs> so he, it was very smart of him. He opened up a custom men clothing, men's clothing company mm -hmm. because that way he would get paid for the goods and then he could deliver them. Okay. And then it turned into several stores that my father took over. And so when I was five years old, my dad put me to work and my first job was taking the inventory of the men's boxer briefs. Oh, wow. That's funny. And then I got promoted to, mm -hmm. I used to stand behind the cash register mm -hmm. and bag the clothes. And then I got promoted from there to, cash to the cashier. And then I realized that I could make more money babysitting. Oh, nice. And so I quit. <laughs> that's funny. And so that's you quit your dad's family-owned store, huh? I did. To go for babysitting. Wow, cool. I did. So what happened after that? What so happened after babysitting, that? Babysitting, how old were you at that time? So we can establish some timeline. Uh, probably from about five until 13, 14, right, cool. 15. And then I went to boarding school. Got it, okay. So I moved out of my parents' house. I lived at school. And I knew that I wanted to go into the fashion industry just mm. like my father. So I somehow uh, convinced a family friend of mine to hire me up in New York City mm -hmm. for an internship where I worked for Master P, the rapper. Okay, cool. And um, so I lived in New York City working for this rapper in his clothing line, designing yeah. hookup suits and, you know, big rapper clothes That's and cool. <laughs> things That's like fun. that. And uh, then I went to school and got a degree in fashion design and merchandising. Okay, so that's cool. Did you, did you have plans to go back to work for the family business at that point? Or were you already on your own, like not doing a men's clothing store in Baltimore, I'm just going to do New York City or whatever? What was the kind of the plan? Yeah, so around the time that I went off to college, my father ended up closing down the men's clothing stores okay. to start Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle, now known as GKIC, yeah, which is how I yeah. met you. Yep. And so I knew that wasn't the path for me, but my parents mm -hmm. were really pushing me towards getting a job and a career in the fashion industry. Okay, got it. Which okay. is what I did. Yeah, eventually. so that makes sense. So, okay, that's cool. Now I kind of understand the timeline. So uh, at what point did you kind of decide that you, there's something bigger than working either for your dad or working for another company? Um, and kind of like, how did you, you know, find your path onto the whole journey to success. Okay, cool. So actually, I didn't really understand what my father did mm -hmm. at Glazer Kennedy until um, I received an email from a gentleman named Mike Capuzzi, okay. who we both know, yeah. inviting me to the Philadelphia okay. chapter. So Glazer Kennedy is the largest provider of marketing and money-making mm -hmm. information to small business owners around the globe. Yep. And um, so I went to this meeting. I was in college. I was this broke college student. And they were offering like free food, right? So yeah, I was like, right? heck yeah, I'm gonna go. I need dinner, That's right? Funny. Yeah. So I went and my eyes were opened up to this whole world of marketing and mm. money making. And I thought it was interesting. And so um, I, I, I followed the path my parents you know, guided me mm -hmm. towards, which was to get a job, which is surprising yeah, right? now. Yeah. I moved to New York and I became this miserable employee to mm -hmm. a corporate job in the New York City fashion industry. Wow. And um, I would say miserable because I was making $35,000 a year in, in the New Big York Apple. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So that, you, that probably didn't cover even your rent. Right? It did not cover my oh, rent. Man. And uh, my boss was a bitch. <laughs> just like um, if you've watched The Devil Wears Prada. Sure. Just yeah. like Anna yeah. Winter. And um, <laughs> yeah, it sucked. 
And around the same time, I ended up actually tearing my spine from all the, oh, the wow. pressure and tension in my back really? um, from the stress of my job. And I had had spine surgery, so my mm. back was already kind of weak at the moment. And um, in that moment, I knew that I couldn't have a nine to five job anymore. Sure. And I couldn't work for someone else anymore because I needed the freedom to take care of myself when I needed to. Yeah. So after a long process, I convinced my father to hire me and and bring me into the family business at Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle. And he made me work for it for about six months. Sure. And um, so dive into that a little bit. How, so you have, you know, a lot of people could possibly have parents that have family businesses or that, or you have children that you possibly want to bring on to your family business. Like I'm building, you know, my business and my little empire. Mm -hmm. And one day my kids will want to probably have internship here and stuff. Yeah. So give me maybe uh, some good advice for people that are planning on doing this, uh, how to approach it so the kids really are not just enabled and, you know, like privilege in that way where they, they think they can just get away with anything. Like how hard was it really? And okay. w would you do it all over again to your kids? Um, so it was hard. And yes, I would do it to my kids. Nice. Okay, good. Cool. <laughs> so here's here's what happened. So I called my father up and I said, okay, what, I want to move back mm -hmm. to Baltimore and I want to join the family business. And so the first time I asked him, he said no. Ah, so I asked nice. him again and he said no again. So then I remembered this saying my father, he taught me growing up and it's glazers never give up. Mm -hmm. So I asked him a third time. And he said, okay, Mara, if you really want this, if you really want to move back to Baltimore and join the family business, you need to earn it. Yeah, nice. So I spent about six months while working in my miserable fashion industry job. Mm -hmm. I also started this little side business doing image consulting for men to oh, cool. attempt to pay my bills, nice. uh, which wasn't happening. Um, <laughs> and I was doing whatever my dad asked me to do, mm -hmm. writing marketing plans, proposals, copy, whatever. And about six months of that goes by and my dad calls me up again. He says, okay, Mary, if you really want this, if you really want to move back to Baltimore and join mm -hmm. the family business, you need to understand two things. So one, you'll be working harder than you've ever worked in your whole entire mm -hmm. life. And uh, my dad definitely worked me like a dog. And I joke now that my dad still works me like a dog and we don't even work together that's anymore. Funny. I mean, he's always yeah. calling me for stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> and cool. um, two, um, you'll be heading up the social and alternative media marketing mm -hmm. department. And I didn't know anything about social media at the time. Yeah. In fact, really all that I knew was how to invite my friends to my parties on mm -hmm. Facebook and post the drunk party pictures the next that's day. Funny. So that's how that went and that's how I ended up uh, having the opportunity to work with my both of my parents. That's cool. Yeah. And I bet you that you probably appreciated it that much more because you had to work for it. Oh, uh, totally. That's hard, right? So that's cool. Um, okay, so you ended up then at Glazer Kennedy. Um, how long did, did that whole thing last and uh, what was, uh, uh, you know, maybe some of the learning experiences that you got from working for another company uh, as an employee versus having your own business still? Yeah, so I worked with my parents at Glazer Kennedy for about three or so years. Mm -hmm. um, and then my parents sold the business to a venture capital firm. Yes. And I was quickly reminded that I am not the employee type. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to eventually go out on my own and I started my own business. And so here was the interesting thing that happened. You know, I had this really great plan. I had had all this mm -hmm. success at Glazer Kennedy. We had just made a million dollars in sales from social media in under wow. a year. That's cool. And um, so I, you know, I thought I was going to open my doors and it was, I was just going to be so successful right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And here's what I discovered is no matter how successful you were, no matter how great your plan is, yeah. no matter how well connected you are, when you go on your own, it's really hard. Yeah. And I quickly discovered that I needed some help and mm -hmm. I needed to get some direction and I needed some guidance outside of myself. Yeah. And so I got it. So how did you get it? Because that's a, another great point is surrounding yourself with people that can lift you up, mentors, coaches, different groups and stuff like that. So if somebody has a business and they really are not at that point yet, surrounded by all these people, mm -hmm. um, what did you seek, seek out first and how did you even get into you know, kind of the, the self-help slash yeah. business advice. You yeah. Know. So what I did is, is I hired a mentor. I hired a business coach oh, okay. to help me. Um, and what I started to do is I started to look around me mm -hmm. and I started to see who was in the place that I wanted to go. Okay, cool. And who had achieved the success that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. 
And then I started talking to them and interviewing them to mm -hmm. pick who I thought could really help me get there. That's really cool. And so that's what I did. when you're looking for a mentor then, that's great. So if you want to be a successful, follow what other successful people do. And uh, that's kind of, I think, pretty you know, solid advice. And I know a lot of other people that really follow that advice and became very successful. So, um, but I think the nugget that I want to make sure that we get from this interview is uh, interview those people. What Mara just said is, you know, do the research, interview those people. Don't just, you know, buy into marketing, advertising, hype messages, whatever. Get to know the person and, uh, and then see if it's a right fit because there's a lot of people that, you know, if you didn't click with them, that probably would do more damage than, than good to your growth, right? So, yeah. uh, so that's cool. Um, well, uh, you have gone on your own from the Glazer Kennedy uh, empire. And uh, what we didn't mention or what I haven't probably even mentioned in uh, this series is um, I used to run one of the Glazer Kennedy chapters. So the Mike Capuzzi that we've mentioned in Philadelphia, super awesome guy, very successful, uh, was doing the same thing. And I actually took over one of the chapters, which was absolutely the best thing I could have done for my growth. Mm -hmm. Because before that, I couldn't even talk to uh, more than one person at a time. I would get, I was one of the you know, people that want to be in the casket instead of giving the eulogy. I mean, my public speaking fears, it was crazy. So when I ended up uh, buying the chapter and teaching monthly three hour long meetings, teaching marketing, I A, had to get out of my own box mm -hmm. and over my own fears of speaking. And then I had to actually study marketing so I can then teach it, which, you know, being in the Glazer Kennedy insider circle world, uh, I had so much knowledge, but I wasn't necessarily implementing all of it and I wasn't really um, as deep into it. But then, you know, doing the whole teaching marketing and um, it was just uh, the best experience. And then I ended up selling it and moving on to the next thing, but uh, it was great. So I just want to kind of, you know, give a little plug to GKIC because <laughs> they are still awesome and I would have yeah. never been where I am today if it wasn't for the uh, coaching I got from them for the three or four years. So cool. uh, definitely check I it out. It. Uh, so, okay, uh, you went on your own. I totally did. Totally different world. What happened after that? What, what was your first big uh, business venture? Uh, <laughs> maybe, you know, kind of like you did more than one thing at the same time, I think, too. So uh, tell me about the growth and how did you? Yeah. So what I did is I, I started a online magazine for women entrepreneurs oh. called The Busy Buzz. Okay. And it was I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh. It was a daily online magazine. Mm. Um, we sent out articles every day. And it was really interesting for me because it ended up not being the thing that I wanted to do. But I didn't mm. really know what I wanted to do. So yeah. I what I knew is that I should just do something. Cool. Yeah. And Take action. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a lot of people that you know, they, they ask me, they're like, I want to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but I don't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You probably have had people oh, say yeah, that sure. to you too, right? And I just say, just do something because then it'll snowball into your next thing. And yeah. that's exactly what happened for me. So mm -hmm. I had built this database online in a couple months of people who were, you know, getting my email yeah. every day. And then um, my mentor who I mentioned suggested I get into teaching people how to make money with social media, just mm -hmm. like I had done at Glazer Kennedy. Right. And so I utilized that email database to enroll clients mm -hmm. and, and start a coaching business. Okay. And so I did six figures in sales in my first uh, four months, wow. multiple six figures in my first year from that list yeah. that I had built for that email magazine. That's and cool. so that, it was really cool yeah. because... So let's just pause and, and kind of insert this whole building a list because I know a lot of people, they have a great ideas, they have you know online, uh, businesses they want to start or they already have and I hear it all the time like how do I get traffic how do I build a list how do I do that so um, so you really just started by sending out daily emails how did you get people to find you or I mean beside yeah. you know a cat and your grandma who did you send the emails on the first <laughs> try so here's what I did so I really when I was working with mm -hmm. my father, Glazer Kennedy, I had built a lot of relationships. All great, yeah. And it's really important mm -hmm. because when I decided to go out on my own, I called up as many people as I knew who were my friends in, yeah. in this world, and I asked them if they would do me a solid. Nice. And I asked them if they would promote it for me. Yeah. And so literally, you know, from the time that I left mm -hmm. the business after my parents sold it, 
And then like a week later, I had I think 40 some pe people yeah. email for me several times nice. this this business that yeah, I had so started. Had, okay, so since we are the overnight success theme, this sounds like this overnight success. It was I, not an overnight I success. I had a whole bunch of people <laughs> that mailed for me, but really there is an underlying thing that you build relationships for yeah. years yeah. and had to provide value and be nice to people and build the relationships the right way. So when you made that call and asked him to do your salad, they said yes. That's right. right. So uh, no matter what environment you are right now and, and whoever you're surrounding with, just always keep the adding the value in the front of your mind, like do that. Don't worry about the money, the money will come, but provide value first to build relationships. Yeah. And besides you, I know several other people that um, go speak and they don't go speak in the beginning to sell stuff from the stage or do something for money. They just go speak to serve people and provide value. And I know one guy that specifically did that and then when he launched this product, everybody, said yes and they everybody promoted mm -hmm. him and ended up with million dollar launch and it's you know this is the whole overnight success we're talking about and all the years leading up to the night mm -hmm. when you became when you become successful it's uh all the stuff you do prior to the moment where you that's decide right. and when it happens for you that's so that's right. pretty awesome so yeah. you start building your list uh you turn into an, you know you turn that into a business and then there was some live events there were some other ventures that you um, started afterwards and I think you had a very successful uh, speaking slash putting on events career as well, right? Yeah, so I kind of snowballed that business into working with women mm. to teach them how to start online businesses. Yeah. And so I did different conferences and events for women and, and we sold coaching programs and training programs, mm -hmm. not just about social media anymore, um, about how to start a business online. Okay. And then I've made several pivots since then okay cool. and I'm actually making one now yeah I know and it's exciting right every it's time exciting. and uh, every time uh, you have new venture and new uh, relationships and all that it's exciting so I'm gonna sneak this one in oh boy oh uh, yeah I know Lay you on didn't me. see this one coming <laughs> uh, you've had several businesses where you had a business partner that's or correct business partners right yeah so what kind of lessons can you share with those, those of us that haven't really figured out how to do a business partnerships the right way, because I've had another business before that uh, kind of went sideways and we had to close it. Uh, and I personally don't really think that I'm the partner type person unless it's really well, well defined and really mm -hmm. you know solidly planned uh, relationships. So if you have to have a business partner f to grow, um, what do you look for or do you, what do you uh, make sure that you have in place? Uh, how do you structure it so you don't, you know, get the bad divorce at yeah. the end because a lot of relationships end. So how do you make it so the ending could be actually good for everybody and it's another stepping stone versus big fat failure and something yeah. that you're going to just, you know, get your day around over. So if I'm going to be truthful about it and tell the truth about it, which I think I sh should. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I've had a lot of challenges yes. with business partnerships. And so here's what I've learned. I've learned from my challenges. So I've learned that you need to be very clear mm -hmm. about the roles and responsibilities okay. of each partner involved. Before you get in, right? Before so, you get yeah. in. And it needs to be clearly defined, written, mm -hmm. signed. It doesn't need to be a fancy legal document as far as I'm concerned. However, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. But it just needs to be written and so everyone has mm -hmm. it. Um, here's probably one of the biggest things that I've learned is it's very important to make sure that you and your partners are in alignment with your values. Okay, good. And I thought for a while that that was really about one thing mm -hmm. and that was about uh, your integrity and that's important. Yeah but there's actually more to it than I've discovered. Your work ethic, mm -hmm. um, how you believe that you should treat people, mm -hmm. um, lifestyle even. I feel like it's really important to be somewhat in congruency with your lifestyle. Yeah. So it's really important to look at all of these areas mm -hmm. when you're looking at how you're aligned. And I don't know that you can possibly know that yeah. until you like give it a whirl. Sure. So. One thing that I've discovered to do is to do like a test, mm -hmm. a test run. 
and to do a test project or a, maybe a joint mm -hmm. venture, okay. right? You know, from the yeah. beginning yeah. and see like how idea. that goes before you, as they say, get in bed yeah. with, with yeah. someone. All right. So that's one thing that um, I've discovered about that. And then the third thing that I've discovered is to just leave your ego at the door. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I really try to make it so that the person that I'm partnering with, mm -hmm. they feel like they're winning. Yeah. And so, um, so, so yeah, I mean, like that, that makes sense. That, yeah. And because I would want them f for, you know, mm -hmm. to, to take actions to make me feel like I was winning too. And I feel like to find someone that has that mentality is, yeah. is really important. And so like even just little things, like I've seen business partners nitpick over whose name comes first mm -hmm. in yeah. the, like the line, like whatever, like just let the other person put their name first. It's yeah. really not a big deal. So just leave your ego at the door and let the small stuff mm -hmm. slide. And um, the last thing I'll say about it is if you end up exiting a business partnership, mm -hmm. stay true to yourself and always try to be the bigger person no matter how hard it is. That's cool. Yeah. That's a great advice. So now to make it not sound like business partnerships are bad, what no. were some of the uh, advantages of having a business totally. partner? That's, I'm glad you asked that question because they can be very yeah. great. So benefits of having a business partner from my experience mm -hmm are aligning with someone who has strengths that are your weaknesses okay. and vice versa, um, who, or who love doing things that you don't love to do. Yeah. Um, another benefit that I found is being a part of a team and, and building a team where you're collaborating. And really okay. that's the thing that I love about it. Hands down, the number one thing that I miss about working with my family and our, mm -hmm. our team that we had at Glazer Kennedy is the team. That's cool. And the community that we yeah. had. I mean, we still uh, we still do Christmas dinners every yeah, year. Yeah, you know, like the annual thing. I've seen it on Facebook a few times. That's yeah, cool. so that's what has always been exciting to me mm -hmm. about it is doing something as a team. And I watched my parents do that. Yeah. My parents built Glazer Kennedy as sure. a team. So um, that's definitely a benefit. Uh, you know, of it yeah. too. Yeah, and I guess having a team or having a bigger business and partnership and stuff like that, that really makes the business more bulletproof. Like it, the business doesn't die with you. If anything happens to you and you're the single person that's ev doing everything, then obviously there's no business. It's not sellable. It's not, you know, you can't really leverage it, grow mm -hmm. it as big. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of advantages. So uh, don't get discouraged, but do it right. So think about the divorce before the marriage probably see you know now in the beginning things are always great and great ideas are flowing and then once you get into it that's where you know things start happening so yeah uh, kind of maybe just like with uh, your goals and everything else in life start with the end in mind and then reverse engineer everything back uh, to the beginning and follow the path and yeah uh, i want to add one more thing about that so there's probably a lot of people watching this who have either considered a business mm -hmm. partnership right or maybe they had one and it didn't work out yeah. So I would say, like, keep going, mm -hmm. you know, don't let that discourage you from achieving yeah. your vision. I've had several business partnerships that didn't work out the way mm -hmm. that I expected them to. Mm -hmm. And I've had to reinvent myself now several times. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, you just keep going, keep working forward to creating your vision because that's what you want, sure. you know. And so just don't let that get you down or don't let that you know, allow you to give up. Sure, that's great. So that's another lesson in its own. You know, every failure really is just a kind of a deposit to your success account. Or, I like you know, that. Stepping stone to your success. So okay. uh, fail forward, fail as much as you want. Just do that and live with your, um, uh, you know, I don't want to call it even failures anymore, like l your learning experiences. Lessons. Just appreciate the lessons, appreciate those experiences, learn from it move forward. And Maybe they're blessings. Get out. Exactly. <laughs> and usually they are actually. And when you look at any experience or anything that happened in your life that's bad, if you look back, mm -hmm. there's typically a reason for it or you can see like why it happened. So, you know, obviously you are today where you are because of all the things that happened uh, previously. Truth. So, um, yeah, of course it doesn't feel good when you're going through it typically, but then, you know, in retrospect, if you look back, uh, that is usually a lesson. So maybe think about some of the things that happened in your life and you were upset about or you were kind of, you know, heartbroken over and then look back and see if that thing didn't happen, what else would have not happened? And maybe today you are in a place that you love 
because of something that happened in the past that you didn't enjoy. So, uh, yeah, think about it while you're watching uh, the rest of the show. So, let's switch to some, uh, like, a f rapid fire question. I want to know about your life purpose. What's your why? What gets you out of bed every morning and makes you go 100 miles an hour like you like to go and be involved in different things? And why do you do what do you do? Why do I do what I do? So, I believe I have two two purposes in this life mm -hmm. that I've identified so far. Yeah. I'm about to thir turn 32. So, so far in these nice. 32 years that I've been so on this fifth planet. Fifth anniversary of your 27th birthday. Is that how we oh, okay. found it? Yeah. I dig nice. it. I dig it. <laughs> so, one is to one day be a mom. Mm. Something that I really want to do nice. and accomplish and achieve and experience. Mm -hmm. And two is to show women that they can create financial freedom in their lives yeah. and create a life that they love mm -hmm. and um, for me that means being able to create money whenever you need it independent mm -hmm. of anybody else that's what that means for me that's awesome and i believe everyone has their own definition of financial freedom but i mm -hmm. want to help as many women and and men too yeah. uh, good men too um do that yeah and so that's what i do why and i do what i do that's awesome and you've already been doing it for a while and you've probably affected thousands of uh, mainly women's life because that's been your Nate, so I think you probably can already feel pretty accomplished, but you know, you got still a few years left in you. Uh, a I lot, have a right? lot of years <laughs> left in me. So uh, <laughs> I can only imagine what, uh, you know, the years will bring in uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now when you look back, how many tens of uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of women will be uh, affected by something you did in your life. So it's pretty That's awesome. Cool, so. Yeah. Um, tell me about your typical day. Okay. Uh, kind of like everybody has a daily routine maybe you know some people are morning people some people are not but what is your typical day My like typical day i everybody wants to know about that <laughs> <laughs> i wake up early mm -hmm. i don't like waking up early but i feel better when i wake up early yes. yeah. so i wake up early i drag my booty out of bed mm -hmm. and i move my body and i work yeah. out and um and you know, I run, mm -hmm. I do like boot camp style workouts, and I just get going. Yeah, that's cool. And then uh, tell me about that. D do you wake up on your own or do you have an alarm? Alarm. Okay. So I want to know how you do it because I know if I put my phone next to my bed, I snooze and snooze and snooze, and five becomes seven, and then I sometimes crawl out of bed. When I put my phone away from my bed, I have to actually get up and make at least five steps to get to it. Then I'm able to totally get up. I love it. Uh, by noon, I feel accomplished, and it's like the best day ever. But I, I have that like the five seconds that if I don't get out of bed because the thing is screaming somewhere in the room, that I don't do it. So are you that Here's disciplined where you can actually do it? Here's uh, the secret. <laughs> Ready? Yes. You have to factor in the snooze. Nice. So here's what I mean by that. So I know I like to snooze <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Yeah. So if I want to actually get out of bed at 6, mm -hmm. I set my first alarm for 5.45. Nice. And then I have a couple more that go off between 5.45 really cool. and 6. Yeah. So 15 <laughs> minute snoozer, that's cool. I'm more like a two hour snoozer. Oh boy. So maybe <laughs> 3 o'clock and then snooze till 5. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Sounds awful. I'll, I'll, I know. I'll stick with my five step uh, <laughs> rule and leave my uh, phone away from my bed. So that's cool. So, okay. So you do, you get up and uh, get your uh, your life going with your exercises and stuff, what's, yeah. up, what's up next? Then I um, have some affirm affirmations I read, I journal mm. a little bit, um, cool. just take to some time to self-reflect, yeah. and then I get ready for my day, and then I make a healthy breakfast, and that's really important. If I skip cool. this breakfast, I am hangry all day, really? and nobody yeah. wants to be around me. You can see the difference. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, and so I eat the same thing for breakfast every day. And then I walk to my office. So I mm. personally like to work out of an office. I know some people don't yeah. like to work out of an office. I like to work out of an office and I give myself a challenge every day as I'm walking to mm. the office, which is to make one person smile on the way to nice. the office. That's cool. And then I start my day at the office. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And then at the office, how productive are you what do you actually do at the office what do i do i yeah. sit around and i watch youtube videos nice that's really cool so <laughs> just kidding and do that for eight hours and uh then what uh, <laughs> no, just um it's a mixture of different things mm. so i like to get uh like email and all that mm. stuff out of the way first because okay. it's my least favorite thing to do Got it. 
Um, and then I like to dive into activities that are really going to make a difference mm -hmm. in the bottom line of the business. So for me, my focus has really more so always been on like the marketing piece of it, driving leads, driving traffic. Yeah. And I've been really lucky in that in most of the businesses that I've had, I've always had someone else or a team of people to handle mm -hmm. the sales for me. That's cool. So I spend a lot of time working on tweaking campaigns, writing copy, headlines, putting together, yeah. you know, opt-in pages and all this stuff, which is the stuff that I really mm -hmm. like to geek out on. That's cool. And um, so I spend my time doing that. All right. Yeah. So a couple of things in, the, in what you just said. Uh, first of all, I know that you recently hire people and that you typically surround yourself with a team of people. You just said that. Uh, give us a couple of tips maybe on hiring and how do you do it the right way? Okay. I think I have this down to a really freaking good formula mm -hmm. at this point. So one, I have this great job description that I've written mm -hmm. cool. that is very clear about what I'm looking for and sets the tone for what I expect. So there's actually a line in my job description that says, mm. I expect for you to work very hard, but in return, I will treat you like a member of my family. That's cool. And so I incorporate language like that mm -hmm. to set the expectation. Here's where I feel like once I figured this out mm -hmm. and implemented this, I started getting and hiring rock stars. So at the bottom of my job description, by the way, I hire all my people off of Craigslist, okay, all cool. the people on my team. So if you nice. think you can't find great team members on Craigslist, that is not true. Yeah, I found awesome. the best team members on Craigslist. That's cool. So at the bottom of my job description, it says to apply for this position, mm -hmm email this email address and use the subject line and I put the subject line yeah. in quotes and I say include your resume and cover letter. Mm -hmm. And so I look to see if they do that. And about 75% of the people who apply will not include that subject line. Oh, okay, so they can follow instructions. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's what I'm looking for mm -hmm. to see if they follow instructions. If you apply for a position with me mm -hmm. and you miss one of those things, I, I don't even look at your resume. Yeah, that's cool. And so then the next thing that I do is I look for typos and grammatical areas, er, er, errors. errors. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> and you know, I'm not perfect at mm -hmm. grammar or spelling, but I again want to make sure that if someone is submitting a document mm -hmm. as important as a resume that they're paying attention to that. Yeah. And so after going through the resumes, if I find one or a couple or whatever that speaks mm -hmm. to me, I send them an email congratulating them that they've made it to the next step and I tell them to schedule a time with me on my calendar and then to call me promptly at the phone number I provide at the time yeah, that they select. Yeah. So I'm looking for a couple things. One, to see if they can figure out the calendar yeah. software. Yeah. Two, to see if they call me and call me promptly. Yep. If the phone rings one minute after the yeah, time yeah. that we selected, yeah. I don't even answer it. Sure, wow, that's cool. And then if I uh, enjoy the conversation, I then bring them in for an in-person. Nice. So it's a process. I love this process. So I hope you paid attention. You can always go back in this video and replay it because this is pretty awesome. And uh, I like the multi-step approach. I've done a couple of things where I you know, get people from Craigslist. I make them shoot a video. So that eliminates about 90% of the people. Yeah. Uh, so I had like a two-step little process, but I love yours. So yeah. I'm going to definitely put it to test and, and it's great. There's one more important step. Yeah. So, so if someone makes it to the end of this cycle, mm -hmm. you have to have a good gut feeling about them. Yeah. Hands down. Sure. If That's you don't, screw it. Totally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes, you know, long haul. So if they're going to stay with you for years and yeah. you have to deal with them on a daily basis, you better get along and feel good about them. So yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's a great tip. So before uh, we dove into this uh, hiring thing, you were also talking about how you do your email and get all the um, little things that you don't enjoy doing out of your way. So that's a phenomenal uh, point here because in one of the other interviews, uh, we spoke to Dr. Ron Eccles, for example, as one of the person that likes to do the big, ugly task that he doesn't want to do, eat that big frog, like uh, Brian Tracy mm -hmm. calls it, uh, first. So uh, you don't have to do it the same way, like Mara, does the emails, little thing. I do a lot of that too, to just clear up my list so I can focus on the big tasks. And some people like to do one of the bigger tasks or the big thing first and then just end the day on a lot of these little things and follow up. So yeah. just you know, keep it in mind that all these interviews and all these great nuggets 
take what you like and leave what you, what you don't. Uh, customize your lifestyle, customize your day to yourself. Uh, I really am doing a lot of these interviews and really have the Overnight Success TV show because I'm gonna show you all the different perspective, uh, perspectives that these uh, people have. And everybody on this show is successful. Everybody has something great to share, but you know, take what you like. See who you can connect with or you have a good feeling about, follow whoever you like, but just do something obviously. Uh, but keep in mind that none of this stuff has to be, you have to follow one person per se. Pick and choose, create your own, uh, your own routines. So uh, let's move on to your work day. Okay, so you're done in the office, you finish your big tasks, your small tasks. Uh, what else do you do? Um, so I go home. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I either do a little more work at home, I FaceTime with friends, nice, okay. or I go on dates because nice. I told you that one of my purposes in life is to have children. Yes. And you I'd, wanna have a guy? I would like to. to do that? Okay. Yeah. So, cool. you know, I Tinder yeah, so and Bumble and, and yeah. all that fun stuff. So you have stuff. Fun, uh, fun out there, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, do, you do, do you have any like uh, evening routine, journaling, that type of stuff, or you just kind of call it a day? And I try um, to be in bed at 9 p.m. and go to cool. sleep okay. by 10.30. It. It's very yeah. hard, but yeah. I really try. But you know what? Going to bed at a reasonable time is actually what makes the getting up a little bit easier. That's exactly why. I notice why. when I go to sleep by 9 or 10, I'm, it's much easier for me to get out at 5 instead of you know, being up till midnight and then try to pull yeah. it off. So. So what cool. I've learned that has allowed for me to be more successful with that mm -hmm. is just as I set an alarm to wake up, yeah. I actually have an alarm that goes off that reminds me that yeah. I need to wind down and start oh. to go to bed. That's really cool. And so it goes off at nine and there's a pop-up on my phone and it says, Mara, go brush your teeth, wind down and get <laughs> into <funny>. bed. <laughs> well, at least you have the reminder on the teeth uh, situation. <laughs> so that's cool. I mean, so my well, uncle okay. once yeah. taught me you should only brush and floss the teeth that you want to keep. So uh, I try yeah. to make that a priority. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> So that's pretty awesome. I've never heard of anyone doing the reminder to go to bed, and I think it's pretty awesome. So I'll try it too. But yeah, so you learned something new, and I did too today. So uh, we got your uh, typical day. Tell me about your books, A library books maybe that you read that you would recommend that everyone that's new to entrepreneurship or even people that are already in business, uh, what should they read? Kind of the ones you would read more than once. Okay, so I'm gonna have a, I think, maybe different answer for mm -hmm. this. I don't really read that often. Uh -huh. And so I actually grew up with a lot of challenges around mm -hmm. reading. And uh, my mother used to read my books to me in school okay. until we discovered this, um, this program uh, called Reading for the Blind and Dyslexic mm -hmm. where they would record even your textbooks for you. Yeah. And so reading's always been a challenge for me, which is interesting because I'm a very good copywriter. So I read cool. read a lot when I'm writing copy. Yeah. Um, but, but because reading has always been a challenge for me, mm -hmm. I watch videos and I listen yeah. to audios. Good. But I bring this up because I think it's important because I had a lot of learning challenges growing up and actually mm. my teachers, I, I finally joke sometimes in my marketing that I was an overweight, grade school bullied, yeah. you know, reject whose teachers told her she yeah. would never be yeah. successful, which is true. And if I can do this, you can do this too. Sure. And so, like, I always struggled with reading. Mm. And if I can do this, anybody, anybody really can, can do yeah. this. And so I, I watch a lot of video trainings. I watch a lot of mm. TED Talks. Mm. I buy a lot of programs that have, um, you know, that are mm. just like videos and things like that. And yeah. I listen to Audible audiobooks um, so do from I. time to time. That's right. And so we can maybe cover some of the titles on, uh, on Audible because I love Audible. I use it when I travel and I have a whole room as a library at home, but I really have most of the books that I want to read. I just get them in the audio version and I yeah. listen at time and a half so I can really get through the book much faster. Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of similar, I guess, way that you do it. But uh, tell me about some favorite, uh, favorite books and titles you've so my, hands down, my favorite book, which is not a business book, mm -hmm. Joe Polish um, actually sent me a video on my cell phone saying, Mary, you need to read this book. Mm -hmm. It's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. 
and it's about all it about too. how awesome. to organize your house, but really there's an underlying message in here, mm -hmm. which is to really get rid of everything in your life that doesn't bring you joy. Yeah. And so that applies to your relationships, that applies mm -hmm. to the things in your home, that applies to your business. Yeah. And so I really took that to heart. In fact, I left a long-term relationship after reading this book. Yeah, wow. I, uh, donated most of my belongings and moved to a different state after yeah. reading this book and uh, have really gotten clear about what I want to do and what makes me happy in business from this book. That's so, awesome. So down to two suitcases and over uh, down to Florida and we'll go out right. to have you here. So it's awesome. That's right. Um, so yeah, if you have you know somebody to break up with, uh, get that <laughs> book and <laughs> get it done. That's so, right. Okay, what How else about uh, Outrageous Advertising? That's outrageously successful. Love that book, yeah. It's a great book. Yes. Uh, my father wrote it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Shameless it's, plug, right? No, it's, it's uh, one of the great ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's see, another great book. How about any uh, mindset stuff? Have you done any Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, that type of reading? Or are you more uh, into, uh, I don't know, Tony Robbins or anything? Or do you just Who I'm really not into it at all? I'm, I'm into two things right now when it comes to personal development, but um, I don't know that there's any books about it. So mm. one, the Landmark Forum. Okay, cool. I'm yeah. really into that Excited right now. That, yeah. And um, two, I just started doing Michael Burnoff's, uh, okay. his trainings. And actually yeah. when I walked in the studio, I had a different shirt on that says Average Sucks, yeah. which is from him. Yeah, he's great. And yeah, that's, that's perfect. Cool. Yeah. So always looking for something, whether it's a book or a course or someone out there. Um, there you have it. You can do watch videos, listen to podcasts, do something. but. Um, do you listen to stuff when you drive? Um, I listen to music when uh, I drive. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's another way to do it. So you can listen to music or uh, and you I can try listen to pretend to, audio to sing, but I nice. really can't. <laughs> well, someone told me if you sing while you're driving, you can't fall asleep. So maybe that's a good, uh, that's good way to stay safe and you know make it from point A to point B. So that's right. Uh, if you're a bad singer, sing alone uh, like me. Uh, if you're a good singer, you know, you can sing for others, whatever, but <laughs> that's cool though. Okay, so uh, tell me about some of the influential people in your life. Oh my gosh. Well, hands down, my parents. Sure. That's so great. my father is my mentor in business. Mm -hmm. My mom is my mentor in life. Yeah, that's And great. we joke that we would all be dead without my mom mm -hmm. because she just keeps it all together. That's nice. Um, but so my, my parents, hands down. Um, two... I've had a lot of mentors in my life, some mm -hmm. that I've hired, some that I've just met who mm -hmm. have taken me under their wing. And I, I'm like so thankful for mm -hmm. all of them because what I've really discovered is the areas where I've had the most success, I've always had someone to guide me. That's awesome. Um, so like right now, more particularly, I'm working with a gentleman who's bought, or I'm sorry, he built and sold three tech companies. Mm -hmm and he's mentoring me every week on building my business and navigating the ups and the mm -hmm. downs of business and it's just so awesome to That's have cool. wow. someone like that. Um, so That's yeah, cool. and then um, I have a couple friends who I refer to as like my fairy godmothers. Yeah. And um, you know. So it's always cool to have somebody you can call and run ideas by and all that stuff and mentors. So um, your involvement, what's your take on masterminds and other groups of like-minded people? Uh, have you always been part of one or do you think it's important part of your uh, your business life? I think it's very important and when I first started my business, the Busy Buzz, the mm -hmm. online That's magazine right. I yeah. told you about, um, I joined a mastermind group and I've been in several mastermind mm -hmm. groups since then and I've almost always been in one. Yeah. And they've been so great for me for a couple of reasons. So one, I've made some of the bestest friends from mm -hmm. mastermind groups. I mean, we were in a mastermind yeah, group for together sure. for a long time. Yeah. Um, two, I've made great business connections. Mm -hmm. I've actually met two business, par two, three, two business partners three from, yeah. actually, yeah, three business partners from mastermind groups. That's cool and have really been able to build a network of people that I can call when I have a question or just want to share tips and ideas. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, another gentleman that we were in a group with together, uh, Colin Sprague, yeah. the other day, maybe it was about a month ago, we got on the phone together and we were just brainstorming mm -hmm. ideas about how to fill workshops together. That's cool. And so it's really cool to be able to build a community like that of people that you just have relationships mm -hmm. with for a long time. Yeah. And some of those people, like Colin, I mean, it's like super, super successful people. Um, 
you know, multi, multi, multi millionaires and they take you under your wing or you have them as a peers that you can bounce ideas off of, uh, it would probably be, it would be probably impossible to just call up somebody like that if you were not part of a group or some sort of insider circle mm -hmm. and have these connections. And it was the same with me. Like, I just love the fact that I can call up any, anybody anytime and run stuff by them and get second opinion, second look at things. And it's just awesome. So uh, surrounding yourself with awesome people is definitely a huge key to, I think, mine and your success. Yes. Uh, likewise. So let's uh, dive into a little bit of a maybe rapid fire quick keys to your success. If you had to identify what um, made you successful in business, personal life, health, kind of all the pillars of life, what would you, uh, what would you say? What would I say? Yeah. Hmm. So my father, who's been one of my mm -hmm. biggest mentors, has had these little sayings growing up and I always kind of just made a mental note of mm -hmm. them and try to implement them in my life as much as I can. So one of them is don't ask, don't get. And I found that every area in my life, business, relationship, what have mm -hmm. you, a lot of times if I just ask for something, yeah. someone will help me or point me in the direction mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. give me that little nugget that leads mm -hmm. to the next step. So, or even in the sales conversation, mm -hmm. you know, which is so crucial to yeah. business. You know, don't ask, don't get. Of course, so, yeah. so that is uh, one of my keys to success. So and that say. applies to all four parts of life that I have outlined. So that's really cool. Um, if we have to approach these uh, individually, so let's say in the relationship, do you have anything besides the uh, don't ask, uh, don't get? Uh, what would you say one of the keys to successful relationship? would be in your case? I think it goes back to um, something that I had said earlier, which it's really important that if you want to build and cultivate mm -hmm. positive, uh, long lasting relationships in your life to align yourself with people who have the same core values as you. Perfect. In fact, Colin, who we just mentioned, mm -hmm. is the one who really opened my eyes yeah. to that. And um, all relationships, mm -hmm. all relationships. And so that's something to really pay attention to, even when you're dating, mm -hmm. even you know, with your friends. Like I just moved here to Florida and yeah. I've been building this whole new friend circle and that's something that I've really had yeah. to keep my eyes on. That's cool, yeah. awesome. How about health? Health, what is one of your my keys biggest to, uh, success to key to health is uh, screw it, just do it. Even if you yeah. don't want to do it, you just gotta do it. That's cool. You know, yeah. you just got to do it. And I mean, you have a, you work out and you have your routine and you eat healthy and all that. So there's way more to it, but um, okay, cool. I don't think that people really consider how important our bodies are mm -hmm. to our whole entire life, our whole entire world and everything we want to yeah. accomplish. Like this is a machine, Yeah. you know, and I am by no means have any expertise mm -hmm. when it comes to you know medical or yeah. health or anything like that but i have people around me mm -hmm. that do that i hire that help me and, and you like do too we actually coach. use yes, some of the same exactly, people yeah. right but but like i just remember there was this one point in my life in my business where i was getting sick every single time mm. i got on a plane and I was traveling all around speaking and there was this one flight I got on that I literally almost ruptured yeah. my eardrum. Really? And yeah. then I had to get on stage mm. the next day and I did this whole talk feeling like I was going to fall off the stage really? and I literally wow. felt like I was going to die. And it was in that moment mm. that I knew that I needed to make some change because if I didn't fix this, I was never going to be able to get yeah. what I wanted. And so. I mean, it's important. Just yeah. screw it. Just do it. I don't want to wake up at 6 a.m. Yeah. But I gotta get. It, right? I gotta. You know, yeah. I gotta get my workout in or whatever. Yeah. So Email. that's kind of <laughs> funny how you have the very similar experience with your health. I, I think when I was traveling and doing all the AV uh, for seminars, I started getting sick every single month, and it started in like September and went on all the way till March of the ne of next year. And then uh, at one of the seminars, I was so broken. I was like, just whatever it takes. I just want to be healthy. Like, it was just so bad. And that's the seminar I actually met Maria Whalen, who is mm -hmm. our health coach and our uh, awesome friend and uh, person that really helped uh, at least me and I know I mean, yeah. for you uh, tremendously. And after that, it was just like that. Like, and you don't appreciate feeling well 
and having all the energy till you, I guess, experience the other side. Yeah. And so I'm just so grateful. And again, it goes back to surrounding yourself with uh, people that you need in your life that can uh, help you health wise, that can help you business wise, that can help you in relationships like uh, and, you know, spouse per se. So really, um, it's important. So if you don't have people around you at the moment or if you do, uh, just appreciate the ones you have. If you don't have any, go look for some because it is important to have that type of support. Sure. Um, so the next question I have for you is, let's talk about me time, which really drives straight, straight into the previous question, kind of uh, taking care of yourself, right? So what do you do for yourself to recharge your batteries, to kind of stay, um, stay up and running? And we already touched on a few things, but if you wanna just sum it up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so some that we already touched on is I stay active, mm -hmm. I eat really healthy, mm -hmm. and I sleep, right? I try to get in bed at nine, yeah. sleep by 10.30, and make sure I'm getting my rest. Mm -hmm. But there's some other things I do. So one, spending time with my friends is very important to me. Cool. And so I make the time to do that and try to surround myself with my friends yeah. as much as possible in many different ways, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason that I really love, like I mentioned, I love going to my office mm -hmm. A lot of my friends actually work out of my office, so yeah. it's really cool. I get to be a part of That's a part cool. of that almost every day. Um, another thing that I really like to do is I love to watch Netflix and just hang out. <laughs> right. You got me on uh, Orange Is New Black one time a few yeah, years ago. I remember that. Yeah, that's right. So. I get that. So that's cool. So that's just to, right. Uh, take some me time, and we already talked about your goals and kind of meditating and other stuff in the mo during the morning routine to get started. So. That's all part of it, I guess. And uh, uh, But yeah, let's just make sure that we uh, drive the point home that it is very important to take care of this one body you got because without this, nothing else will happen. And just like the airlines, they have it down. Put your mask on yourself before you put it on your child or anybody else. So True. take care of yourself. Um, how about uh, time management? I want to kind of know, do you have any special uh, time management techniques or strategies? How do you schedule your personal stuff, your business stuff um, when it comes to time management? So I use a calendar. I use one calendar mm -hmm. um, and I just block it out on my calendar. Yeah. And then in addition to that, so I find that a lot of times I'll get all these ideas mm -hmm. that pop into my head and then I start to feel really overwhelmed mm -hmm. and really stressed out because I've got all this stuff in yeah. here. So what I do is I do brain dumps of to-do lists and I get all the ideas out of my mind mm -hmm. and then I reorganize those lists to see what's important, yep. what I can just completely trash, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we get these ideas yeah. in our head but like they really don't matter. Yeah. So what I completely trash, what I can delegate to somebody else, mm -hmm. what I can put on the back burner, or put on like a, you know, a list of things that I'd like to do later. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I do that and then I'm able to schedule the things that are really important into my calendar. Cool. Do you schedule your personal stuff or business stuff first? Uh, I do priorities? it all at the same time. All at the same time? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, so yeah, time management, uh, you can't have any more of it. Uh, you can buy time, but you can manage it and, and um, prioritize stuff. So if, uh, let's just say, I'm, you know, for people that do have maybe more personal stuff, vacations and all that. I've, I've noticed myself that if I don't put my personal stuff on the calendar, I have so much work that I can fill up the whole thing with right. just work. So uh, the last few years when I've been scheduling my personal stuff first, uh, I'm definitely getting way more vacation time and more, way more getaways and doing fun stuff with the kids and all that. So uh, sometimes if you really are that busy, uh, scheduling your personal stuff may be uh, pretty important. Um, so, okay, so let's uh, wrap it up. I think uh, we got some awesome information. So uh, tell me about your definition of success, whatever success means to you. Um, okay. Look back, go to your f happy success place. What's your life like? Financially, health-wise, family-wise, relationship-wise. Success to me is being able to do what I want, when I want, with the people that I want. Nice. And in turn and while I'm doing that mm -hmm. be able to help a lot of people and make a positive impact in their lives. That's mm -hmm. what success is to me. That's awesome. Cool. I yeah. love it. 
So thank you so much for sharing all yeah. your wisdom and your experiences. I had fun. Me too. Hopefully you, you guys learned something from uh, Mara and uh, enjoy this episode of uh, Overnight Success TV. And uh, I hope you could join us next week for another awesome interview. Until then, wake up and be successful.